Okay, good morning, e-learners. We were just going over the test that you should have completed. Uh, so I did not want to record that. Now we are going to get started here. All right, I'm not calling out the answers uh, for today since I went over the test. So e-learners, as long as you have filled out the form, you will get credit for your homework. If you have any questions on your homework, please ask. All right, everyone look at the board. All right, let's do this with the least amount of chit chat, please. So this week we have a quiz on Thursday. Uh, of everything we do, of everything that we do this year, let go. Of everything that we do this year, I would say today is one of the most important classes. Okay, one of the most important classes today and tomorrow and the next day. Most important classes because today we are going to learn or review how to add and subtract integers. How to add and subtract. I believe today is adding, tomorrow is subtracting, and then the third day is multiplication and division. So there is a lot of homework tonight. And that's because I need you to practice this. I need you to really do a lot of practice on this. So seventh grade, you get exposed to it, like the rules of adding, subtracting, positive and negative numbers. Uh, eighth grade is when you gotta, you, you, you gotta master this. I mean, like no doubt, you gotta master this. So let's see, I've been teaching uh, eighth grade pre-algebra for this is my 11th year teaching it. Um, what I typically see, seventh graders, maybe half of them do a good job, half of them have no clue what they're doing, they get everything wrong. Eighth grade. I reteach the class. Oh, by the way, these are going to be the same slides you saw last year. I changed nothing between course one and free algebra. I same slides, same instruction. So by the time you get to eighth grade, that half turns into more like three quarters of the class will be solidly. Yeah, I know how to add, subtract, positive, and negative numbers. It's that last quarter that typically takes them to December, sometimes a little bit spring break, to master this. Pre-algebra will be challenging if you can't master this quickly. Like you will get lots of things wrong later on in the year because you haven't mastered this skill. For those of you that think that this isn't that important, everything that we do from now on will involve positive and negative numbers. Every kid gets to know how to multiply and divide them. That's not the issue. But the issue is adding, subtracting positive and negative numbers. Now, for those of you that had me as an as instructor, you're going to hear very familiar stuff today. For those that you haven't had me before, my explanation uh, might be slightly different than what your teacher told you. For all of the kids that I ever teach, though, what I basically say is I'm going to have a method of talking to you. When we talk about adding, and it's all the problem only involves adding, subtracting. Like I said, multiplying, dividing, kids get that almost immediately. But when I question you, when you look at two numbers and you're trying to figure out what the answer is, you're going to hear me say the same thing over and over again. Same or different signs. Add or subtract. Okay, add. Okay, subtract. Right? Did you have more positives, more negatives? Or were you adding positives or were you adding negatives? It's going to be the same words over and over and over again. For those of you that struggle, I encourage you to have those statements on a piece of paper in front of you at all times. Not today. Right, but by the end of the week, have that in front of you. And so that every time you encounter two numbers that you got to add or subtract, you're doing the same thing. Hey, same or different signs, add or subtract. All right, add, all right, subtract. All right, more positives, more negatives. Or were you adding positives or were you adding negatives? Those, that, those statements. And you'll see how that works today. Here we go. So today we'll do adding, tomorrow we'll do subtracting. Uh, how many people have never been taught how to add or subtract positive and negative numbers? Put your hand down. Okay, so that's good. So you've had this class before, and as I said, these are literally the slides you saw last, what did we do in March? This is like the last thing we did? Or did I do this during COVID? I don't remember. No, you did it before COVID. Okay, so you guys really haven't had the full benefit of like a teacher on your butt, you know, in class. So some of you, Right, are probably starting from uh, st starting from uh, a, a deficit here. I forgot how to do 
Okay. Here we go. So this class is going to be on integers. The homework will include decimals. I choose not to throw decimals into the class. I just choose nice friendly numbers to work with. We don't have to worry about scratch work. We can do the math in our head. But the homework will include larger integers and, and decimals. So be prepared to do a little bit of scratch work. All right. So quick note uh, for tonight's homework. This will be the last day that you see the negative above to the left. After today, they move that negative down. We never see it again, right? So in class, I choose not to put that negative right there. I just want to get you used to seeing where the negative actually appears. The negative will appear in the middle of the number. Everybody seen that before? Confused? Okay. So in box one, remember the definition of yellow is what I want you to write down. Can you write for yourself one? Write this down in yellow. We're going to be dealing with integers. Integers are a combination of the natural numbers, we call those the counting numbers. Right? One, two, three, four, five, that sort of thing. You did, and I tried yeah. to scare you with this one. You did the, the raw. <laughs> so you, this will be the third time you've heard this. Okay, so integers are the natural numbers. They're opposites and zero. Uh, last class, we learned about absolute value and opposites. So those are the numbers that we're going to be dealing with today. Homework also will include decimals. All right, so we're going to talk about adding integers. I choose to show you an alternate method of adding subtracting. Today we're doing adding, tomorrow we'll do subtracting. So I choose to show you this method, it's called the coin method. Many students learn how to add initially with coins. So here's the game, right? Addition means grouping. Take one group of numbers, a second group of numbers, push them together and count how many you got. This is called a grouping uh, technique. So here's my game. If the number is positive, we're going to represent positive one by a coin that has a plus in it, right? So minus one will be represented with a coin with a minus in it. So, so plus two will be represented how what? If this is how I represent plus one, how do I represent plus two? Two circles with pluses in it. One, two. How do we represent minus two? Or negative two, two circles with negative. So, that's how we're going to represent numbers, and I'm going to show you how to add and subtract using this method. Today we'll do adding some more and subtracting. Okay. Am I adding or subtracting here? Adding. Well, how do you know you're adding? There's a plus symbol right there. So you know you're adding because there's a plus symbol right there. But what am I adding here? Two negative numbers. I'm adding two negative numbers, and I said we're going to use this. It's called the coin method. We're going to use a method to represent this. So if a minus one coin represents minus one, well, how do I represent minus seven? So how many coins do I need? I need seven coins with a, with a minus symbol. And then to that, I'm going to add minus four. So I need four more coins. So there's my minus seven. I got seven of them. To that, I'm going to add, sorry, add, Four more negative coins. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Addition is grouping. Push those together into one pile and count. All right, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. But what are the coins? Negative. negative. So the answer is not eleven. It's negative eleven. Yeah. Coin method works. Every time the coin method works. Okay. Let's see that again. What's the first number? Three. So how do I represent three? Three coins with a plus symbol. Three coins with a plus symbol. One, two, three. To that, I'm going to group together or add what? Four, Four negative coins. Suspiciously, I put them next to each other. If this means plus one, and this means minus one, Grayson, what's one minus one? Well, that's zero, so there are no more coins there. Well, what's one minus one? What's one minus one? Zero. How many coins am I left with? One, one and it's a, negative. so the answer to three plus negative four is negative one. The coin method works. Every time the coin method works. 
Let's do one together. Box two. Here we go. Box two. Box two. Box two. Using the coin method. Using the coin method. Please do this. Force yourself to put a circle with a plus. How many circles with a plus do I need? So give me two coins with a plus. Make sure you do this. To that, I'm going to add what? So how many coins? Four with a negative. One, two, three, four. Suspiciously, I put two of them next to each other. I'm grouping them together. I said that this means plus one and the other coin means minus one. What's one minus one? So that one goes away. What's one minus one? How many coins am I left with? Two, but they're both negative. So what's two plus negative four? Negative two, apparently, according to the coin method. No, by the way, that is the answer. Does the coin method work? Yeah. Every time it works, and you will get to the right answer. One more time, box two. How many coins do I need? I need six negative coins. Give me six negative coins. I see a whole bunch of people not doing this. Yes, you need to do this. Do this. I'm coming around to look at your papers. To that, we're going to group what? Coins. 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 To that, we're going to group. Where are your other two coins? To that, we're going to group. You got it. We're going to group two more. So, how many coins we have? But each one of these represents minus one. So all the coins now are the same color, right? They're all negative, right? So how many negative coins do you have up there? I got eight negative coins. So what's negative six plus negative two? Negative eight. Who's lost on what I'm doing here? Does the coin method work? Yeah. Every time the coin method works. I do this for a reason, two reasons. The first one is, the coin method is going to show us where the rules come from. Does anybody actually add with using the coin method? Not after the first class, we learn the rules, but the rules come from this scenario, right? Secondly, if you ever forget the rules, guess what you can always do? If you ever forget the rules of adding, subtracting, guess what you can always do on a test? You could do the coin method, okay? So two reasons. One, it's going to show us where the rules come from. And two, it's an emergency technique for, oh, I forget what negative three plus seven is. Oh, you can always draw three negative coins and seven positive coins and then do the coin method. You are required to do two of these in box three using the coin method. Pick two of them, whichever ones float your boat. Pick two of them, use the coin method. You already done with the coins? Use the coins. Prove to yourself that the coin method works. Use the coin method. It works. And it's going to, two reasons, it's going to show us where the rules come from. And then two, it's an emergency technique for, I've forgotten everything and my brain hurts. How do I do negative three minus 10? The coin method. I haven't shown you how to do subtraction yet. I used the coins. I finished it. Yeah, I used the coins in my head. I put the coins down on the paper. Put the coins on the paper. What? Uh, I don't have any coins. There, there, are, there are some students that I encourage to do the coin method, right? It gives you a, a, a chance of getting a, a question right when you're really confused. You can always use the coin method. You shouldn't be confused. All we're doing is counting coins. Jaden, which one did you do? All of them. All right. Tell me how many coins. Uh, uh, for first one, two coins, positive coins. Five positive coins, three negative coins. How many cancel out? Uh, three do. Three do, and you're left with? Two positive, so therefore the answer is positive two. Very good. All right, Gabby, which one did you do? Bottom left. Tell me what to do with the coins. And 
You got nothing but negative coins, just add them up and you get, you get negative seven. Coin method works. Uh, who did the upper right? I did. All right, Genevieve, talk me through <laughs> using uh, coins. So, uh, plus, like, three five three. three positives, and six, negatives. six negatives, how many cancel? Uh, so then you're left with three, three negative coins, therefore the answer is? Negative. The answer is negative three. Who wants the last one? Last one, go. You got to talk to me about coins. Oh, so you do the two minus circle points. Well, uh, and then to the next of it, you do uh, five zero next. Or five zero what? <laughs> two negative coins. Uh, and then to the next, of, or yes. right of it, you do five negative coins. Agreed. So you got nothing but negative coins. Therefore, we simply add how many you got? Seven. Negative coins, therefore the answer is negative seven. All right, who's the smarty pants that wants to tell me what the problem with this is? Jaden. Huh? Hey, what's the problem with this it's method? It's not negative. It, it's a positive. It's oh, no, no, all these are right. And we use the coin method to get no, all of these answers. So what's the problem with the coin method? Or is there a problem? It only works with addition and well, that's all we're doing is addition subtraction. Genevieve, what's the problem? Oh, once you get to bigger numbers. So the problem with the coin method, right? <laughs> right? The problem with the coin method is that you want to use the coin method? Yes, sir. <laughs> Heck no. I mean, technically the coin method would get us to the correct answer, but it would take quite a few hours to use the coin method on that problem. Right. So we are going to come up with the rules, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not lying when I say the coin method is where we get the rules from. Yes, it's an emergency technique. Yes, you can always use it, but we better have some rules to do numbers like this, and the rules come from the coin method. All right, so the rules will tell us how to do each one of these. There are two rules for adding, only two rules that you need to remember. Remember, we're talking about adding, some, adding we'll talk about subtracting tomorrow. Adding positive and negative numbers, in other words, integers. All right. I will be talking about what are called same signs. Is everyone paying attention? It doesn't look that way. I will be talking about same signs. What do I mean, same signs? I mean two or two. When I say same signs, I mean both numbers are positive or both numbers are negative. Check it out. Are both numbers here positive or negative? Positive. Are both numbers here positive or negative? negative? So I'm talking about when the signs are the same, or I'm talking about when, second rule, signs are the same, or signs are different. Signs are different. Uh, I will use the word different or opposite interchangeably. So when the signs are opposite or different, what does that look like? Well, they're same. What does opposite or different look like? Or, so either one, either the first one's positive and the second one's negative, or the first one's negative and the second one's positive. So, hey, check it out. The first one is, first one is, and the second one is, or the first one is, and the second one is. Those are opposite or different signs. Step number one in your understanding of how to add numbers is, can you tell whether the signs are the same or are they different? Can you do that? Does that sound like a hard skill? This is, you've got to be able to do this though. If you can't tell whether the signs are the same or different, then you'll apply the wrong rule. If you can tell whether they're the same or different, well then we're moving on, yes? We're moving on. So I need you to write this down. These are the rules. Remember, we have two rules. One for same and one for different signs. So the rule for same sign is this. Coin method. Remember I said the coin method will tell us the rule. What do we do when all the signs were the same? What do we literally do? We just add the numbers. But I'm going to make it complicated. But I do want you to remember, all you do is add the numbers. What do I want you to remember? Add the numbers. But i got to make it complicated. But you just told me what you need to do, just add the numbers. So here's the complicated, this is the actual definition. Okay, what I'm really going to do is, right, that means both signs are positive or both are negative. What I'm really going to do is add the numbers. Add the numbers. Add 
Add the numbers. Okay, why did you say that was positive and this one was negative? Okay, so you already know the basic rule, but here's the actual step. Step number one is you add the absolute value of both numbers. Most of, no, both, most of you already knew the answer to this because you've ignored this and you've simply said, well, add the number. Well, what allows you to strip away the negative? You take the absolute value. So the absolute value just means what is its magnitude, like uh, negative seven, how far is it away from zero? It's seven units away. So technically, remember I'm trying to confuse you here, technically the first step is to take the absolute value of both signs, add, and then use the original sign. Originally these numbers were what, positive or negative? So therefore the answer is positive 11. Originally the, the numbers were so that's why this one is negative 11. Uh, this is what's in the book. Most students simply have their own like shortcut rule, which is add the numbers. If I was adding negatives, the answer is negative. If I'm adding positive, the answer is positive. Jaden? So basically, we're just adding the absolute value. That's what it says. And then keeping the same signs. Keeping the same signs. Okay. But we get that rule from the coin method. Hey, if they were both negative, you just push them together and you counted. If they're both positive, you push the numbers together and you counted. Okay, so if I apply the rule, no student would ever do this. If I applied the rule, this is what it would look like. It says add the absolute value. So uh, I will only do this for a few slides. Uh, I need to add the absolute value. Absolute value of seven. Absolute value of four. Four plus seven is, or seven plus four is. And original signs, originally it was positive, so the answer is positive 11. I, would I mark it wrong if you put plus 11? Eh, nobody does that, but sure, it's fine. All right, same over here. Well, this time the absolute value does do something. Absolute value of negative 7, absolute value of negative 4, 7 plus 4 is original signs word, so negative 11. Uh, all the time, but most students do this. Hey, Finger method, watch me. The signs are the same or different? Same. Add the two numbers. Okay, use the original sign. And I usually say, were you adding positives or were you adding negatives? That's what you're going to hear me say for same signs. Hey, same or different signs? Same. Well, what's this sign? Okay. If it's nothing, it's always positive. Positive. Okay. So here's what I will say. Hey, are you adding the same or different signs? Same. So do you add or subtract? Uh, so add the numbers. Add the numbers. Were you adding positives or were you adding negatives? negatives. So the answer is? Negative. If you follow the rules, well, then you got to take the absolute value of both. Absolute value of that is? Absolute value of that is 31. 12 plus 31 is 43. Were you originally adding positive or negatives? Negative. All right. I don't want to confuse you by saying two different things, but that is the rule in, in action. Okay. Most people just say same or different signs. Yeah. When you have same signs, you add. So add the numbers. Were we adding positive or negatives? We're adding negatives. Okay. Okay. All right. Same or different signs? Oh, different. Same. Okay. Same. Does that mean add or subtract? Add. We haven't told you the subtraction rule yet, right? So it means add. Add the numbers. Were you adding positives or negatives? Negative. So the answer is? Negative. negative. All right. We follow the rules. We take the absolute value of both. Add them. And we're adding negatives to negative 19. No one actually writes that step. Why? It's an easy step to do in your head. Right. All right. Are we adding same or different signs? Same. This is box five, by the way. All right. Add the two numbers. Nine. Okay. Apply the original sign. Nine. And you're done. No one actually does that first step. Well, everyone does that step. It's incorporated. It's incorporated into the same. Same or different signs. Add or subtract. We just simply say add, and we leave off the word absolute value. But everyone is actually doing the absolute value when they do this process. When I say add the numbers, 
You're not adding a negative five and a negative four. You're adding a positive five and a positive four. Who's lost? What's the answer? Three. Are we adding same or different signs? Same. We'll add the numbers. Three. And what were we adding, positive or negatives? Three. Positive. So the answer is three. Now, here's what typically happens is this. I usually get a large group of kids that already probably have mastered this and they're just yelled out answers. The, the, remember I said about a quarter of you struggle, at least through Christmas? That quarter, if you're sitting there right now and saying, oh, yes, I got nothing. I don't even know what the heck went on today. Those are the kids. If I could see you for tutoring early, we could fix this so it's not Christmas when you finally figure this out. Okay? We'll find out quiz, not, quiz day. This will be the, typically the first quiz where I literally have people fail. They fail really badly, right? Because they, they, they don't match the skill quick enough. And then I'll have the rest of the class get hundreds. Okay? So if you're one of those quarter of the kids that struggle with this, show up for tutoring. We can do this, you know, I mean, how long did it take you to learn your multiplication tables? Yeah. Right? Some people learn it quickly. Some people took them months. Same with this stuff. <laughs> All right, no more coin method. Just write the answers. Go. Box six. Box six. You got three of them wrong. What? No. No. I mean, I could do five. I thought you got everything right. Negative seven times negative five would be a negative seven. I know. I, I was guessing you had three wrong. I found two so far. What? Oh, <laughs> well, I found three. No. I, I did this pass so I can do my homework, by the way. There are three wrong answers. Find them. Oh, find what about the back side? That's what I checked. <laughs> All right. We good? Yeah. No. All right. Avery, first one, upper left. What's the answer? Um, negative 25. Negative 25. We'll go straight across. Negative 25. Uh, same signs. Same signs means add. 7, 18 is 25. We're adding negative, negative 25. Going to be lower? Uh, 40. 40, same signs. So we're adding and they're positive. All right, next. Chase? Oh, uh, top right? Yep. Uh, 1,590. Uh, he's right. You, you got to carry one. So 92. All right. Uh, and then the last one. How much? Negative 140. Is good. Right, very good. All three of them? There were three of them that were wrong. There's none of them that are wrong on here. I said on the back, there are three oh. ones that are wrong. Oh. Boy. All right. So we are going to quickly move on. You know, it, last year we spent some time on this one. We did a lot of these. We're not spending any more time. We're moving on to the next one. So we just had the rule for what? Well, same signs. Now we're going to do different signs. All right. So we're missing something. All right. That would be bad. Right. <laughs> so remember when we did the coin method, right? The coin method was this. We lined up the positive and the negatives, and then we did some canceling. That canceling could be thought of as, well, we didn't do addition when we canceled. We were subtracting things. So the, the rule for different signs ends up being you don't add the numbers. You subtract the numbers. And think about it. We subtracted from the larger number of coins, the smaller number of coins. Yeah, those are the ones that canceled out. So that's the rule is if the signs are different, you subtract. So let's write this down box seven. So when you have different signs, that means either the first one's positive, second one's negative, or the first one's negative, second one's positive. The rule is, well, watch my fingers. Same or different signs? Same or different signs. The different. The same or different signs? Different. Hopefully you saw that. No, e-learners couldn't see that. I was pointing to the signs of both numbers. So now we see that the signs are different. We're still adding. There's still a plus there, right? But the signs are different. So when the signs are different, well, we're supposed to take the absolute value of both. 
We just decided because of the coin method, we're going to subtract. But how do you subtract? Because there's always going to be a big number and a small number. So how do you subtract? Uh, you do the biggest number minus the little number. You're going to go big minus small each and every time. Big minus small. You take the absolute value of both numbers. In other words, you look at the two numbers and you subtract big minus small. But we've stripped away both of their signs. That's why you have to take the absolute value. That's why Friday's class was on absolute value. So we strip away both signs. We do big number minus small number. And then we have one last step. You ask yourself, did we originally have more positives or did we have more negative numbers? Did we originally have more negative numbers or did we have more positive? Occasionally I get a student that's confused by that. Most students get that. I've had students in the past say, well, uh, four is always bigger than negative seven. That's true. But if you think about the number of coins, there were more negative coins and more positive. Right. Each time there were more of one coin, the answer was either that, 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 you know, positive or negative, depending upon which one you had the most of. So I always say more negative or more positive. But what I'm really saying is more negative coins and more positive coins. Last year, I had a kid, you know, to the very end, you're like, Mr. C, I just don't get it because four is bigger than negative seven. So there's more positive than negative. Well, there's always more positive than negative, value-wise. Right? Okay, so we use the sign of the largest absolute value. That's what I basically just said. Do you have more negative or do you have more positive? Okay, so those are the rules. Now let me show you how it works. So we still start off with same or different signs. Same or different signs. I'm asking for an answer. Same or different sign? If it's different, do you add or subtract? You subtract. Remember, if the signs are the same, you're going to add. If the signs are different, you're going to subtract. And then I'll say, okay, once you say subtract, then I'll say, we'll subtract the numbers. So subtract the numbers. Three. Okay, seven minus four. And you do big minus small. So seven minus four is three. And then the last step, do you have more positives or do you have more negatives? Positive. So therefore, the answer is negative. No, three, positive three, three. three. Positive three, because you said you have more positive than negatives. Over here, same or different signs? Different. Does that mean add or subtract? Subtract. Uh, different means subtract, same means add. So different, subtract. Can we subtract the numbers? Seven minus four equals three. And we always do big minus small, and yes, we're doing the absolute value. Seven minus four is three. Uh, do we have more negatives or more positives? Negatives. So the answer is negative three in this case. Yes. Uh, new kids, have you learned it a different way? Sort of, kind of, maybe, right? Uh, if you like your old method, and however your other teacher explained it to you, stick with that. If you like my method, go with my method. All right, here we go. Same or different signs? Different. Does that mean add or subtract? Subtract. Subtract the numbers. 18 minus 7 equals 11. Did we have more negatives or more positives? Negatives. So negative, negative 11. It can be done that quickly. Now notice, I show, I'm show i showing you right here, I am taking the absolute value of both numbers. No one actually ever does that for real, like the way I'm showing you. They just simply say what I said. Same or different signs, different. That means subtract. Okay, subtract the numbers. 18, that's when you're doing the absolute value. You're just skipping writing the, literally the symbols for absolute value. 18 minus 7 is 11. And then we say more negatives and more positives. Negatives. So therefore, the answer is negative 11. you got to tell me if you are lost. Jenna, you good? Don't say yes if you mean no. Are we good? Okay, good. So, Jenna, here we go. Since you said you're good, same or different signs? Okay, add or subtract. Okay, subtract the numbers. Big minus small. 11 minus 6 is? Okay, now just be careful. I mean, she said the right answer. Uh, be careful. It doesn't always mean that we subtract from left to right because the bigger number could be on the right. Okay. In this case, it's on the left. 11 minus 6 is 5. Jenna, more negatives and more positives. So, therefore, the answer is you did it. My claim is, as I said in class, I'm teaching you with friendly numbers, things that you can do in your head. Okay, so tonight from the homework, it's going to be 100 negative 117 plus 65. It's still the same process. Okay, maybe you can't do that in your head. Follow the procedures, right? Regardless. All right, box eight. Here we go. Same or different signs? Different. Add or subtract? Subtract. Subtract the numbers. 14. More positives, more negatives? Positive. So positive 14.
We okay? Yeah. Am I going too fast? No, too slow. All right. Well, Lana, you had three mistakes on your paper. Yes, I was. Rushing. In fact, it was on box nine that you had two of the mistakes. You didn't even get there yet. Two of your mistakes were in box nine. Oh my God. All right. All right, do these four, please, and then we'll talk about the last thing when we're done. I forgot the symbol. And that makes the whole thing wrong. Brad, but I got the. Um, so next yeah, time let's I'll like, use appropriate language, please. Okay. Next time I'll get game. Mm, I've heard that before. Oh no, I never. Next time I'll turn in my homework. Next time I'll do better on the test. I did. <laughs> I did. Next the me. Time so, the, 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 the worst. I think you did worse on the this one than the previous one. Are you already done? No. Yes. Then yes. work. <laughs> uh, these are more like homework except for decimal. So they're larger numbers. You got to do a little bit of scratch work. Negative, negative. I say it's not wrong. But I mean, yeah, it's wrong. I got it. Get me a yeah. All right. Uh, let me finish this up by saying this. Look at the board. The only thing I left off was what happens if you have three numbers. How Everybody look at the board. Look at the board, please. All right. Tonight for homework, you will have four numbers that you have to add or subtract. So here's how it's done. By PEMDAS, what must we do first? Uh, to left to right. We got to go left to right. Everybody look at the board. Sit. Look at the board. So take your magic finger, right, or an index card. Cover up the stuff that you don't want to look at. I don't want to look at that because I got to do left or right. You can only abstract two numbers at a time. All right, same or different signs? Different. different. Same. same. So add or subtract? Add. Add, add the numbers. So we get negative 18. Right, drop down what you didn't do, and then take your magic finger, cover up the one that you don't want to look at. Yes, sir, that's Same or different signs? Different. Add or subtract? Subtract. 18 minus 15 negative is? Negative three, so you get negative, negative three. Five. Now, I'm showing you scratch work. Some of you can do this in your head. Uncover what's left, same or different? Same. Add or subtract? Five. So add the numbers, five. and we get negative five. There we go. See you later. All right, e-learners, if you have any questions, ask me the questions. If not, I will see you guys tomorrow. And remember when I say ask questions, I mean send me an email.